All right. So in this video, I'm going to talk about section 3.6, okay, which is um, in this particular, uh, for this particular video, um, it's going to be a continuation. Uh, okay. And we're going to focus on the complex zeros and what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, i.e. FTA, okay? So we're gonna define the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay? Uh, we'll talk about the uh, zero theorem, okay? And then uh, we'll get into how to construct a polynomial uh, given, given its roots or zeros, if you will, and their multiplicities, okay? And then we'll look at uh, uh, statement regarding linear and quadratic factors. Okay. All right. So start by let's start by looking at the fundamental theorem of algebra. So what this basically says is that okay, if you have a if we have a polynomial, right? So here's the general form. Uh, remember that the powers must be non-negative integers. Okay, um, those are, for example, um, 0, uh, 1, 2, 3. And, and for this, actually for this theorem, we are requir we're requir requiring the fact that n must be bigger or equal to 1. Okay, so a minor detail there. And the reason for this, the reason for this restriction is that um, if we have a degree if we, sorry, if we have a polynomial of degree zero, then if you recall, that just means that we have a constant. For example, okay, let's say f of x is equal to, let's say four, right? And so four can be represented as four times x to the zero. So that's why constants have degree zero. So if you look at the graph of four, well, it doesn't have a, it, Basically, it doesn't cross the x the x axis, so it doesn't have any x intercepts. Okay, so that's why we're considering a, a classification of polynomials of n big or equal to one. Okay, and the fact that um, a sub n is not equal to zero because if we have to have the leading coefficient there. Okay, the other special requirement, okay, is that um, this. We are allowing complex coefficients, okay? Which, okay, so complex numbers okay, are basically this, something like this. Okay, complex numbers, for example, it could have two plus i, okay? Or four minus i. We could also have something like this, where we just have three i. Okay, so those are examples of complex numbers. Okay. Okay, and so with that, so with those specifications, then this polynomial has at least one complex zero. And the, okay, and the key word being here, being the key word being at least one. Okay. at least one complex zero, okay? So an example of, of something that looks like this would be, okay? Could have, let's say four X to the power three plus let's say two minus I X squared plus X and let's say minus I for example, okay? So, we're allowing, right? So basically, we're allowing real and complex values for the coefficients, okay? For the, okay? and also for, um, it's possible that this constant could be complex value. Okay? So that's this is a very general statement, okay? And keep in mind that every real number can be expressed as a complex number. Okay? So what do I mean by that? Well. Right. If we take, let's say, if we have four, for example, well, four we can write as four plus zero i. Okay. 
right? So, right, so four now is represented as a complex number. Okay, so we just put zero here for the i part. By the way, this is so every so every complex number, okay, can be written in this form. A plus uh, IB, or sometimes, okay, sometimes we put in top. Sometimes we put the I uh, before the before the number or after. I'll just write this way for consistency. Okay. All right. So this part right here, this is the what's called the real, this is the real component. Okay. This is a real component. This is the imaginary component. Sometimes we say the real part and imaginary part okay, of a complex number. So for, so for example, for the value four, uh, the real part is four and the imaginary part will be zero, okay? So going back to this theorem, okay, we could have something like this. Okay. So even this would fall under this theorem, right? So that means this would have at least one complex zero. Okay. Keeping in mind that every, right? So every, okay, um, every real number can be expressed in the form of a complex number. Okay. All right. So as a so a, a follow-up of this is that if P of X is a polynomial of n of degree n bigger or equal to one, then there exist complex numbers, okay? So A, C1, C2, dot, 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 C of n, such that P of x can be written this way, okay? So, so A is sort of, A is the, basically the leading, uh, the leading coefficient here, okay? And then for each, each root, you have a corresponding factor. So these complex numbers, okay, are basically the um, the the, um, the zeros, okay, the complex zeros, okay, of of the function, okay. So if you have, so if we have these, then we can easily uh, we easily recognize what the factors are, okay. So for each one of these, right, you have have these factors, okay. So let's look at an example of this. All right, so let's say our polynomial is p of x equal to, say, x to the power 3 minus 3x three squared plus x minus 3. Okay? And for this example, let's assume that we want to find all the zeros of p. And then using those, we want to find uh, the complete factorization. Okay, all right, so let's look at this problem. So finding all zeros of p, so basically, again, that just means we want to figure out, okay, what are the x values that give us an output of zero? Right, so we just, right, so going back to the basics, okay, that this polynomial equal to zero, right? Okay? Right, and so then this is where you need to bring in your um, your skills to solve to solve an equation. Okay. All right. So we can either right. So we can either use um, we can pick up. Let's say we could try. We could try a, a a root here, and then use the long division process that 
that we went over in class, or um, in this case, because right, we have four terms here, what we can do is we can use something called factor by grouping. Okay? And that's what and that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so we're going to use what's called factor by grouping. Okay? All right, so the way this works, right, is we're going to group the first, okay, the first two terms and the next two terms. So this is going to, so we're going to basically get this plus this one. Okay. And then we're going to factor out, factor out x squared here. That's going to leave us with x. Remember that x squared times x. You're multiplying these, right? You add the exponents. So two and one is going to give us three. And then here, this is going to leave us with three here. X squared times minus three is negative three x squared. And then we have this. So now, if you take, if you look back, right, uh, we have a common factor right, here. Right? This a factor. This factor appears here, and it appears here. So we can factor, we can factor an x minus three up, right, from each term. So we're going to get x minus three here. Okay, this is going to leave us with x squared. Right, so x minus three times this, so we have x squared. And then, because we're taking out, we're taking out this factor, so we have to replace this by something, right? So we, so we put a one here. Now you get x minus three times x squared, which gives us this, and then x minus three times one, which is this, okay? So, so a way to think about this is that we have, Right. There's a kind of a hidden one there. Okay. All right. So take this out. Okay. Uh, the one remains. Okay. And now look at this. We have basically uh, we have um, product of two factors here. So we set each factor equal to zero. Okay. So we're going to get x minus 3 equals 0 or x squared plus 1 equals 0. All right, so this is going to give us x equals 3 or, okay, we're going to get x squared equals to negative 1, okay? Let's go up here, okay? So we got, so we have x equals 3 or x squared equals to negative 1. So we found, right, we found one of our solutions, right? In this case, uh, zero, okay? A zero for the polynomial. Okay, so what about this? So you may think this is not solvable. However, right, or in other words, like there may, what right, can you think of a number such that when you square it, it will give us, negative one. Well, under the real numbers, there's no solution, okay? Okay, assuming that we're working with just the real numbers, okay? However, now we're throwing in, we're saying, okay, let's throw in the complex numbers. So these kind of numbers, for example, okay? So 
there is an important, so, okay, there's an important uh, definition that we need to use in order to solve this. Okay. So let me explain that here. And we'll go back to this. All right. All right. So if we have the square of negative one, okay, then we can basically separate this. Okay. Uh, we can separate this out, okay, as square root of, let's say, minus one times one, okay? So negative one times one is negative one, right? So that's kind of obvious, right? But then, okay, so square root of one, so how does this help? Well, okay, uh, so right here, okay, so really, we, you know, we can't really do much with that, okay? So we go back, okay, and, so uh, more than, I would say, let's see, more than 200 or 300 years ago, I think 300 years ago, okay, even more than that, um, mathematicians looked at this and thought like, okay, how can we work with something like this? Okay, so, we, so at that time, they came up with an idea of, okay, let's just assume that this is going to be I. Okay, so, okay, so let this be I. So for example, right, how would this work with other numbers? Well, okay, so then we would say, okay, what about this? So what if you have the square root of a negative, let's say nine? So this can be written as minus one times square root of nine. We know that square root of nine is three, okay? And then square root of negative one, right, we're calling i. So we have i times three, which gives us three i, okay? All right, so this, okay? So this is just to, basically, this is just to allow us to, to work around or to work with complex values. It's so that we can do, so that we can uh, solve something like this, okay? By the way, Okay, if we square both sides of this, right? So if we say square root of negative one, okay, where that's gonna be minus one, and then I and then that's gonna be I squared. So square both sides and we end up with this. Okay, so this is true for right both ways, okay. So that's another that's another statement, right? Related to complex numbers. So I so whenever you square the i, basically is equal to negative one. Okay. All right. Um, so that's a that's a direct consequence from this one. So let's go back to our let's go back to the problem that we're solving. Okay? Now, because now we're allowing this. Now we're saying okay. We're not just working with real numbers, we're working with complex numbers as well. So this is going to give us okay, x equal to plus or minus. Okay, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And therefore, this is going to give us plus or minus i. Okay. So there's our two other solutions. Okay, so we have one, right? So we have one real solution here and two complex solutions, okay? So a couple a couple points on this, all right? Notice that uh, the polynomial that we're working with has a degree of three. Remember, the degree is the largest exponent that you see in the polynomial. And if it's written in descending order, it's gonna be on the, what's called the leading coefficient, okay? And notice, right, we have how many solutions, okay? How many solutions we have? Well, okay, we have like one and then two and three, if you count the plus or minus, okay? All right, so the other thing uh, to observe here is that going back here, right, remember that every polynomial with complex coefficients. Now remember, 
This could also include, uh, could also have the coefficients be real valued. So complex is just basically every, remember every real number can, can be expressed as a complex number. So this theorem is saying that it has to have at least one complex zero, okay? And apparently, right, so right, we, have, we have two here, okay? All right. And we can also, well, basically we have, if you think about this, we have three because we can write, remember, we can write three as a complex number, three plus zero i, okay? All right, so, so again, the key here is that it has at least, right, given, this, given these assumptions, polynomial has at least one, okay? All right, um, let's see. The other, thing, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention here was that notice that, notice this one, okay? Um, you get, so you get plus or minus i here, okay? So it turns out, Okay, there's a, we're going to talk about this later, but if, if the coefficient, or sorry, if the polynomial has, right, real value coefficients, like the ones you see here, okay, then if it has, if one of the solutions is complex, then it must contain what's called the complex conjugate, all right, of that, of that complex root, okay? And so these are, right, see, that these are what's called complex conjugates. And so let me explain that over here. Okay. So the complex conjugate of this number would be 2 minus i. Okay. Complex conjugate of 4 minus i would be 4 plus i. Complex conjugate of 3i would be minus 3i. So you, so the general, the general definition Okay, is that if we have right a plus b i, I can write like this. So the complex conjugate is basically a minus. Bi and vice versa, right? So, in other words, the complex conjugate of this is this. Okay, the complex conjugate of a minus bi is a plus bi. So, so we say they they occur as a comp complex conjugate pair. Okay, just like right here, right? You have plus or minus i. So, so they belong as a as a pair. Okay, so that is. That is true for any polynomial with real value coefficients, like the one you see here, is that if there's a complex zero, that means that the, the complex conjugate also has to be there, okay? Uh, so, so, so looking at this, okay, let's see, just to make sure you understand this. If we have, for example, let's say three i, Okay. Plus two. And I ask, okay, I ask you, what is the complex conjugate of three i plus two? Okay. Right. So, right this way. All right. So, three i plus two. What is the complex conjugate of that? I should denote that here. Complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate, okay, it's not going to be three i minus two, okay. So, right. So it's not this, okay. That's wrong. So remember, it's the sign that changes in front of i, okay. So technically, complex conjugate is going to be this, okay? or you can, or you can write it this way. Okay. But the point is that the sign in front of i changes to the opposite value. Okay. Okay. So be very careful of that. All right. Yeah. All right. So going on to part B. Okay. Um, so basically, we did. Uh, 
we have enough information now where we can find the complete factorization. So let's do that. So for part B, okay, and let's write this over here. So the complete factorization is basically, uh, we want to rewrite this polynomial uh, just with, just with the fact in terms, or in terms of the factors. Okay. So, okay, so we can rewrite this as uh, x minus three, okay? So right up here, so remember that if that's a so that's a solution, right? Then the corresponding factor will be x minus three. See? Okay. And then you have x minus i times x plus i. So you do that for each of the each of the zeros. Okay. X minus whatever whatever the zero is. Okay. All right. So that's our right factorization. Okay. So notice that we get right. We have linear factor here, and we have these factors in terms of complex numbers. Okay. Let's look at another example of this. All right, so our polynomial is going to be x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x. And again, we want to find all zeros of this polynomial and then find the complete factorization. Okay. So in this case, we have three terms, okay? So regardless of how many terms we have, the, the first thing you should do is try to factor out the common, try to factor out a common factor, okay? So again, so the goal here, right, is that we want to figure out the zeros. So we're going to set this polynomial equal to zero, okay? So you notice that each term has an X in it. So let's go ahead and factor Factor out that x. Okay, this will help. Um, this will help with the process. Okay, we're gonna factor out x. So that's gonna leave us with x squared here. We have two x. We have an x remaining here plus two. Okay. All right. So we basically have x equal to zero or x squared minus two x plus two equal to zero. So we found uh, one of the roots. That kind of makes sense, right? You put a zero for each term, right? It's going to give you zero here. For the next one, okay, that's a, if you remember, that's a quadratic, right? Degree two, okay? So we can, right? So we can use either the quadratic formula, okay? Or we can use complete the square to solve.
Okay. And the reason, so the reason that we only, we have these, um, I mean, the reason that we can, we have these uh, only, uh, these are the only options is because if you, if you try to, right, so if we try to factor this, okay, um, it's under the, assuming the, the integers, um, it's not going to be factorable, basically, if we're assuming just integers. In fact, if you remember, in that quadratic formula, which is, uh, which I'll go ahead and write here, okay, we have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, okay, all right? So this is the quadratic formula, okay, that can give our solutions. So the part under, and if you recall, the part under the square root, okay, this is what's called the discriminant. Okay, and so if you, if we plug in, right, so if we plug in the values, okay, of this polynomial, right, so B, okay, so B is negative two, okay, we have A is 1, B is minus 2, and C is 2. Okay. So if we plug in our values okay, into, the, into this part right here, to the discriminant, so we get minus, minus uh, 2 squared, minus 4 times A times C. Okay, so we end up getting, okay, we end up getting a, um, a negative value, okay? All right, so just plugging in, right, plugging in B, and then A, A is 1, and C is positive 2. So we get the fact, like, we get the, uh, the result that the discriminant is negative, which means that we're going to end up with a square root of a negative value, which means that we're dealing with complex values here. So this, so we can't factor this in the in the usual sense, like we've done in the past, or in, or that you've done in the previous courses, okay, in previous math courses. All right. So, uh, so yeah, we could right. So we can right. So so we could go and continue like this, right? Okay. In fact, what I'll do here. I'll go ahead and solve this using, I'll continue here, solve using the quadratic formula, and then I'll solve it using completing the square. So you have, you can see uh, basically the two different methods, okay? And it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to go over this completing the square because I, that's a very important technique, especially uh, doing some for, you know, for doing some other things. All right, so let's, for, let's continue from here, okay? That's, we already found the discriminant. Okay, so x is going to be equal to, so we get negative b, so that's negative, so minus minus, plus or minus, square root, well, we already did that here, so it's square root of negative 4, all divided by 2 times a, which is so a being 1. Okay, so that's right. So this becomes that. Okay. And all right. Okay. So now this this becomes we have x equals to basically we can write this as four plus or minus. And two on the bottom. Remember the square root of negative four. See that over here. That is equal to square root of negative one times square root of four. Remember, this is i. Okay, and then we have square root of four, which is which we know is two. So, so two times i. Well, okay, so that's going to so that's going to give us two i here. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. This should be two. Sorry. So that's better. Yeah. 
So positive two, positive two, positive two. Okay. All right. So now we can re we can further simplify this. Okay. This is going to be basically the same as writing two over two plus or minus two over two i, and that reduces to one plus or minus i. Okay. Right. So there's our complex solutions, and again uh, we have. Right there, we have a basically a complex conjugate pair here. Okay, one plus i and one minus i. Okay, so we should be able to get the same result using completing the square. Okay, so let's let's do that here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take I'm going to put write that here. Okay, so that's using that was using the quadratic formula. Okay. So now let's look at let's look at using the let's look at um, solving this using completing the square. Okay, let's do that up here. We have x squared minus 2x plus 2 equals to 0. Okay, so let's work without this part first. So we're going to complete the square on that, and then we'll set that equal to 0. Okay, so remember the way this works, okay, is that we have x squared minus 2x. We want to take and add something here. Okay. And then we have two. Okay. So the two we put out here. So everything in the parentheses, right? But we keep, so basically we keep these inside the parentheses. Okay. And we're not factoring out something here because it's just a one. Right. We don't need to factor out anything here. Okay. So we have this. And because I'm adding something here, I need to, right? You need to subtract the same amount. Otherwise, we'll be changing the original, we'll be changing the original function. Okay? So whatever we get here, that's going to uh, be subtracted. Okay. And so the way we the way we get that okay, is that we take half. We take half of whatever's in front of x and divide by two. Okay, sorry, uh, half of that number and then square it. So minus two, we take half, which means that we divide by two and then square it. We get negative, so, so you get negative one squared is positive one. So negative two divided by two is negative one, right? Negative one squared is one. So we end up getting this. So this is gonna be x squared minus two x plus one plus two minus one. Okay. All right, okay, and okay. So now, because of this step, we can factor this. This is gonna be x minus one squared plus one, okay? So remember, this is what this is called the this is the vertex form of this polynomial. Okay. Okay. So we have so we have this form. Now we're going to set this equal to zero because we're interested we're interested in finding the, the roots. Okay, so setting this equal to zero, we, we move the one over, right? And then we need to solve for x. So we're gonna take the square of both sides. When we take the square of both sides, that takes care of this, that basically takes away or removes that power. 
and then we have square of sorry, uh, we have plus or minus square of negative one. Okay, and then we and then solve for x. So x is going to be one plus or minus square root of negative one. And what is square of negative one? Okay, remember by definition. By definition, square root of negative one is i. Okay, so this is going to give us one plus or minus i. And that's exactly what we got here okay? using the quadratic formula. Okay. All right. So either method, right? Either method is acceptable, whether you use whether you use the complex conjugate, I'm sorry, whether you use the um, complete square or quadratic quadratic formula. Okay? All right. So now we have our we have our zeros. And again, okay, uh, notice, okay. Notice that we have how many zeros? One, and then two and three if we count the signs here. So we add those up, three. So degree three. Okay. okay so let's take care of uh, part B. So we want to find the complete factorization. So, okay. So we just take x minus, okay, uh, x minus the root value. We get x minus zero. Here we get x minus one plus i, and then times x minus one minus i. Oh, uh, let me see. I'll, I'll move this over. So, so, sorry, that was off the screen. So we're going to get. So again, we get x, so x minus zero. So write that here again. Okay, x minus one minus i. And then x minus one plus i. And then this can be written as x times. We can, I can go ahead and distribute the negative there. Okay? We get x minus 1 and then x plus i. And then here we get x minus 1 minus i. Okay. So that's our factorization. Okay? So in other words, if we multiply everything out, okay? if we expand everything out, we, and then some things will cancel out and we end up back to this form. Okay. All right. So let's get into what's called the uh, the zero theorem. What is the zeros theorem? All right, so all this says is that, so in general, what this, what this is going to say is if we have a, if we're, so now we're allowing, uh, we're, we're allowing complex numbers. So if every polynomial of degree n is going to have n number of roots, and that's going to, and you also count the, the multiplicities, okay? All right, so, so let me let's let's let me write this up. Every polynomial of degree, and again, I should mention that n should be bigger or equal to one because 
if degree zero is a constant, right? So for example, y equals four. Y equals four doesn't cross the x-axis, okay? So, so that's why we have to, right? We're saying every polynomial of degree n be equal to one. So we don't include the constants, constant uh, polynomials. Okay, so we have every polynomial of degree n bigger or equal to one, okay, has exactly n zeros, okay. Provided, right, that we're, that a zero, okay, right, that a zero of multiplicity, a is counted k times. So again, you're, so we're counting, so if we count the multiplicity for each zero, okay, then that total is going to, along with the other, right? So if you're counting everything, right, with the multiplicity, okay, for each root, then that total is going to be equal to n, okay? So here's, so here's an example, okay? And we can illustrate this by going through and solving another, or finding the zeros of a polynomial here. Okay, let's say we want to find all zeros and state their multiplicity. Given that polynomial okay, is equal to x to the fifth plus six x cubed plus nine x. All right, so again, we have this polynomial. So the first thing we should do is try to factor out the Try to figure, find, uh, try to factor out the common factor. Okay, so we're gonna, we have x. That's gonna leave us with x to the fourth plus six x squared plus nine. All right, so we factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is, is x. Okay, so. Yeah, so this brings us to another interesting kind of uh, technique, okay? So notice that we have two there and four, okay? So what we can do here is we can assign this, we can assign x squared to some variable. Let's call it y, right? And then let's see what happens, okay? So we're going to let, in other words, so actually, let me show you. So let me show you something else here, okay? So if we write this as just looking at this part here. So this can be written as x to the power two, to the power two plus six x squared plus nine, okay? So going back to what I said earlier, right? We can let, Right, so if we let y be equal to this term here, okay, let y be equal to x squared, okay, 
then we can rewrite this as y to the power two, because we, I, you know, we have y squared here. So y squared to the power two, okay? Right? So we have y squared, okay? So this is y, okay? And so this becomes y squared. All right, so, so again, so this is just y right here. Right? So I'll just box this. So that's y, right? We're letting y be equal to x squared. So this, right, this, this whole part is going to become y squared now. Okay. So now we can reduce this, right? So we can rewrite this part as y to the power 2 plus 6y plus 9. Okay. Okay. So there's our polynomial, and remember, finding all the zeros, so eventually we're going to set this equal to zero, okay? So now we can factor this. This is going to be y, you know, y times, right? okay. I'll, factor, I'll do that later. Okay. So we have y, okay, we need two factors of nine that give us six, so it's going to be three, or minus three and three. Negative three times negative three is nine. At the same time, oh, this should be positive. Right? So, so it needs to be positive, right? So three times three is nine. At the same time, when we add three and three, we get six. Okay. All right. But remember that we're working with y equals x squared. So we're going to replace y with x squared. So this becomes x squared plus three times x squared plus three. Okay. And don't forget, don't forget our x. Like we had an x there. Okay. So, right. And so, this, okay. So basically, now this is the same as x times x squared plus 3 squared. Because we have, right, we have two of them. Okay. Right. So now we set this equal to zero. Okay. And then we solve. So obviously x equals zero is one of these solutions. Okay. And the other one is basically this. Okay. So this means that we're going to set x squared plus three equals zero, okay, and then solve for x. We get x equals two plus or minus square root of negative three. Well, remember that this can be broken up as square root of negative one times square root of three. And then square root of negative one is, by definition, i. So this is going to give us x equals two plus or minus square root of three, i. Okay. But we also have to remember that this, this is coming from this factor, right? Okay, so we have to state the, right, we need to make sure that we state the multiplicity here. Okay. So this is going to be x equals plus or minus square root of 3i with multiplicity of 2. So again, multiplicity of two, that's coming from here. So for example, if that was three, this will be multiplicity of three. That's four, this will be multiplicity of four. Okay. All right. So right. Okay, so we found right, so we found our roots. Okay, so Okay. So tying this example in back to here, okay. So if we count the right, so if we count the if we, if we count the roots along their multiplicity, okay, we have okay. Uh, so we have one here, right? So this counts as one, and then 
this counts as basically you have, okay, I'm going to wrap this way. So you have multiplicity of two for each for each of the plus or minus values. So you have to count both of them, both in positive and negative. Okay, so this one has multiplicity of two, okay? And this one has multiplicity of two. So this total is four here. So we have four here plus one, that's this one, right? So that gives us five, okay? So that's what this is saying, okay? So we count the roots along with their multiplicities. That number, right, that total is gonna to equal to the degree of the polynomial. And this is assuming that we are, you, we're working with complex numbers, okay? Because this doesn't hold true, right? This doesn't hold true if, um, if we're working with just real values, right? Because if we were, if we were just working with real numbers, then this only, this solution would only be, it would only have this one, okay? Zero, okay? So if we again, so if we throw in because if we throw in allow if we allow the complex numbers, then we're able to solve something like this now. Okay. The next thing, right, or the next example is we want to uh, construct a polynomial given its roots and and uh, multiplicities. So we want to find a polynomial. In other words, we want to construct a polynomial okay, that has three, four. And and we're given that the zeros and zero zeros of one minus two i and one. With multiplicity of two. All right, so basically we're working backwards, right? So before we're given a polynomial, we want to find its roots, okay? So this time we're given, okay, we're given the degree and we're given the roots with multiplicity and we want to construct the polynomial. Okay, so all right, so let's see what we have here, okay? So we have, okay, one minus two i, okay? Now remember what I said earlier, if, if a polynomial, Okay. If a polynomial has a complex conjugate, okay, sorry, if it has a complex number, then the complex conjugate also has to be there. Okay. So, right, so that means means one plus two i is going to be there. Okay, so these are complex conjugates, complex conjugates of each other. And then this statement right here, this means that we're going to have x minus one with two, right? The multiplicity is the, right? It's the, 
corresponding power. Okay, so we have, so basically, let's write all this out. So we have x, so basically p of x is going to be equal to, we have x minus one squared, okay? And then we have x, x this way. x minus one minus two i. I'm using brackets here, even, but you can, you, you can use parentheses, parentheses if you want. So we have x minus one minus two i, and then we also have this one. Okay, so you have x, right, minus the root, okay, and then x minus both of these. So x minus one minus two i, x minus one plus two i. So, all right, so what we need to do is we need to, we need to multiply everything out and then simplify, combine like terms uh, and all that, okay, all that jazz. All right, so, all right, so let's start with, let's just focus on this part for now, okay? So this is going to give us, okay, let's do that over here. We're going to get, so basically this is just x minus 1 plus 2i. So we distribute the sign here. So x minus 1 plus 2i times x minus 1 minus 2i. Okay. So if you simplify this, it will cut down on the possible, uh, on the possibility of messing up with the signs. Okay, so now we just factor this out. So we're gonna have x times x, right? And I get x squared minus, so minus x times negative one, so, so, so negative x, and then minus two i x, okay? So again, this is, all right, so we have this, this one, this one. The next one we're going to do with negative one minus one times this minus one minus one. We have minus x. Negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative one times negative two i. It's going to be plus two i. Okay, and then let's use a different color for the other one. So two i, two i times x, two i times negative one, two i times minus two i. Okay, so we get two i x minus two i, and then we get minus four i squared here. Okay, so. So if this was all, if this was set up properly, if this was all multiplied out properly, then what should happen is that um, all the ix terms should cancel out here. Okay. All right. So, okay. so we have two ix here minus two ix. So those two get what cancel out. Right. Uh, we have two i here plus two i and minus two i. Those cancel out. All right, now what about the what about the minus four i squared term? Well again, okay. So i squared, going back to here, remember from here, if we square both sides, we get negative one for i squared. Okay, so i squared is equal to negative one. Okay, so this, we have x squared, okay. uh, we get minus 2x, and combine those two terms, and then we have the plus 1, and then we have minus 4i squared here. That's going to give us
and I squared gets replaced by negative one. Okay, from this definition. Okay, so now we get that's going to give us x squared minus two x plus one plus four. We get our so we get uh, that result. But remember, that's coming from here. So we're going to take this, plug it into here. Okay, again, all this, right? This is all coming from here. So we put that back into here. Okay, now because we're trying to find the trying to find the polynomials, we have to multiply all we have to multiply up this out. So let's do this, right? This is going to be, and let's do that over here. Yeah, I can do it here actually. So this is going to be x minus one times x minus one. So that's going to be x squared. Minus two x, we get so we get negative x minus x. That's minus two x plus one. Okay, and then so now okay, we get so we're going to take this and multiply it with this. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's start with x squared. We get x to the fourth minus x squared times minus 2x. That's minus 2x cubed. x squared times 5 is 5x squared. This is why you learned all that. Why you learned that distributed property back in algebra. So x to the fourth minus two x, uh, sorry, minus yeah two x cubed, and then plus five x squared. Okay, so let's do it for the other term minus two x. So minus two x times x squared, that is minus two x to the power three. Then we have minus two x times negative two x, that is positive four x. Okay, and then two x times five, we get minus ten x squared. So again. Taking this times this one, this times this, this times this. And then finally, the last term, okay, so we have one times x squared, negative two x, and positive five. Okay, so let's combine all the terms. So we're gonna get x to the fourth, So we have x to the fourth, we have 2x cubed and another 2x cubed term. So that's going to give us minus 4x cubed. And then we have the squared term. So we have 5x squared. And could be another. 5x squared should be another term in there. To be square here. All right, yeah, there should be a square right here, you see? So, gotta be really careful, including, including myself, right? I have to be careful. So, 2x minus 2x times minus 2x is 4x squared. So, now, okay, we have this. We have 5x squared here, 4x squared, and this one. So, that's gonna give us 5, 4, and 1. So, that gives us 10x squared. Okay, and then we have 10x, okay, and we have minus 10x and a negative 2x too. So that's going to give us a minus 12x.
this term and this term. And that leaves us with plus five. All right. So there's our there's our polynomial, okay? Um, so that's our solution, okay? Okay, and notice it's degree four, okay? So what we do is we take x minus this one, so this root, and there's power two that's coming, that's given here, okay? So this one, so multiplicity of two. So if this was multiplicity of, let's say, for example, four, this would be four here. Okay, and then we have to expand it out, okay? Just like we did here, uh, just this part, okay? And then over here, right, we expand it out here. And then for this one, you have one minus two i, so therefore the complex conjugate must be, must be there. It must be part of the solution. So we get one plus two i. So if that's one plus two i, then we know that one minus two i is also part of the, uh, it's part of the solution set, okay? For the, uh, as part of the, Solution set for the complex zeros. Okay, so we set that up here. So it's x minus your complex roots. We expanded, we expanded that out, put it back into here, and multiply it by this one. So we have to expand this out and then, and then work it out here. Okay, so there's our degree four polynomial. Okay, that's that's the whole process. All right, let's look, take a look at linear quadratic factors. Um, let's, there's a special something, um, there's a statement I wanna, I wanna make there. So it turns out that every polynomial with real coefficients can be factored okay, We factor into a product of uh, linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Okay. With with real coefficients. Okay, so let me let me illustrate this with an example here. So let's say we're given right, um, let p of x be equal to x to the power of four plus 8x squared minus 9. And so we want to, first thing is that we want to factor, we want to factor P into linear and what's called irreducible quadratic factors.
And then secondly, uh, we want to factor P completely into linear factor. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the first one. So again, this is one of those special polynomials, right? Where you have x squared here and x to the power of four. So we're going to use a um, substitution technique for that. Okay. So this can be written as x to the power of two plus eight x squared minus nine. So you can see a pattern here, right? We have x squared here, and then we have x squared to the power two. So we can pick a variable, let's call it y. So we can let y be equal to x squared. So p of x is going to be equal to y squared plus 8y minus 9. Okay. So this is sometimes referred to as a quadratic in disguise, okay? And this kind of thing, this kind of uh, idea where you're substituting in another variable, uh, this shows up in a lot of different ways throughout math, including, uh, including in calculus one and calculus two, okay? All right, so, all right, so we solve this and then we, uh, and then we put it back in terms of the original variable being X, okay? All right. So this, right, so this can be factored as we have p of x equals to y. We need another y there. So obviously y times y is y squared. So now we got to think of two factors of negative nine that sum to eight. So that, those, right, so those numbers are going to be minus one and plus nine. Negative one times nine is negative nine. And at the same time, when we take the sum of these, right? In other words, negative one plus nine is going to give us eight. Okay. All right. So, okay. So this, okay. So this means that we have replacing y with x squared, x squared minus one times x squared plus nine. Okay. All right. Okay. And then if we have what's called a difference of two squares, so we can break up, we can break this up even more. So this is going to be x minus one times x plus one times x squared plus nine. Okay, so this is what it means that if we're not allowing complex numbers, then E is written right, as a product of linear factors and quadratics. So in other words, we can't reduce this. We can't, we, we can't do anything more with this because we're not, we're only considering real numbers here, okay? Okay, so this is, right, so this is linear factor, okay? This is linear, this is linear, this is quadratic. Okay? So every polynomial, assuming that it has real coefficients, which is what we have here, can be factored into a product, okay? Into a product, right? 
of linear and irreducible quadratic factors, okay? With real coefficients, okay? So, right, okay, so that's what we have, right? So we have, this is our original polynomial, and this is the factorization. So it's expressed as a product of linear and quadratic factors here, okay? And, okay, so we can't, so if we're only working with real numbers, okay, we can't go any further than this. So now let's consider B. So we want to factor, we want to factor B, P, sorry, P completely into linear factors. So to do that, in order to do this completely, we must allow, right? We must allow the complex numbers, okay? So, have to allow those now if we want to if we want to write this if we want to reduce this some more right now right so right now it's irreducible irreducible right uh -huh. irreducible quadratic factors so irreducible means that again we can't factor this any further uh, because we're not dealing with complex numbers if this was x squared minus nine then yeah we can reduce this using the difference of two squares okay so now let's go back all right so let's go back up here and let's uh, let's see. Do that up here. So if we take, if we look at x squared plus nine and solve this. Okay, so we're going to get x equals to, sorry, x squared equals to negative nine. Okay, so that means we get x equals to square root okay, of negative nine, which gives us, okay. Basically, square root of negative one times square root of nine. Okay. Okay. So negative one, or sorry, square root of negative one is i. So that's going to be i. Okay. And then we need a plus or minus here. So don't forget that. Okay. And square root of nine is three. So this, right? So this is going to give us plus or minus three times i. Okay. And so now, based on this, our okay, based on this now, okay, we're going to have p of x equals to x minus one times x plus one times x minus three i times x plus three i. So that is a complete factorization now into linear factors. Okay, each of these, each of these is linear. Okay. And even those, right? For complex numbers, is it still considered to be linear, but in complex form? Okay, so that's the difference, right? So we have a polynomial, we factor it into linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Okay, irreducible means that we, when we say this, okay, when you see this term irreducible, it means that we're not allowing, right? We're not allowing complex numbers. Not allowing those. Okay. As soon as we allow those, then we can reduce it. We can reduce it into a product of linear factors. Okay. So such as right, such as the result that you see here. Okay. All right. So factorization is very, very important in math, especially when it comes to um when it comes to doing what's called uh, cryptography, because cryptography is all about factoring of, of prime numbers, okay? Uh, I should say factoring of numbers into, into primes, okay? And we can take that, uh, we can also, uh, we also consider, right, or use the, the polynomials, right, to, and we wanna factor those 
basically into, into linear factors. Okay. So it is very, it's used, um, it is definitely used in, in, um, in areas of, in a way, in computer science and, and especially in um, cryptography. Okay. All right. So with that said, um, I'll stop here. Okay. And then uh, we'll continue next time. Okay. Thank you.